sports again. Uh, guys, just quick update. So last week, uh, we did actually have a winning week. Uh, the record came out to 5-5, five and five, but because two of the plays were for quarter unit, we actually came out about a unit up. Uh, 1.2 units, depending on what number you got, but that's what I am at. Uh, so I'm going to go over the picks from last week, just kind of recap that, and then I'll give you the picks for this week. Now, I will tell you, um, this is going to probably be, again, and I know I say this every week, it's probably going to be a light week, um, and I, I try to keep it that way, but usually once I start breaking down a game, uh, I'll get into that game and we'll kind of break it down each and every angle that I can and really stick with that. Uh, for this week, I'm going to try just a little bit of a tweak to that. And I'm going to give you my three best bets. Now, I will tell you, unfortunately, some of the numbers have moved. And, and I apologize. I was going to get that out in a uh, like a podcast format kind of thing. Uh, but either way, I want to give you those three picks. And then if one, you know, the line could move back in some of the uh, situations. Or two, if you want to put them on teasers or whatever you got to do to try and get the numbers that's fine as well and then we'll go over some lanes too just so, so you kind of have an idea of where, where my mind's at in case something else does come up throughout the week uh but right now uh for the last week picks we had the patriots minus six and a half on that was a thursday night game that one cashed pretty easily i think it was 25 to zero uh the next win on here was the seahawks under 24 first half and so this is one of the games that i broke down each and every single way um the seahawks game was this that it was just I broke it down and I really thought the Seahawks were going to win that game uh, but either way I knew the scoring was going to be kind of low in that Seahawks game even with Russell uh, Wilson back there he just has not looked great uh, since his come you know his comeback here and that's exactly what happened the first half did stay under 24 the full game did stay under the 47 and a half we didn't even buy the extra half to get up to the 48 and we still won that one so we got two wins on that one uh, but the the loss was the Seahawks money line. They were the dogs at the time. I think they were like plus two and a half when we took them. Uh, so that one did hurt. But again, that's only for a quarter unit, so it wasn't so bad. Uh, Cowboys money line to Chiefs. That one we did take early in the week before we knew Amari Cooper was not going to be in the game. Uh, honestly, that would have really swayed my pick, only because against the Chiefs, you really want to have that quick hitter right off the line kind of receiver. And without Cooper, there the Cowboys didn't really have anybody to fill that role. And then, of course, they lose C.D. Lamb. Uh, and then it looks like Zeke was playing on, like, one wheel. So that one's in the loss. But, again, that's another one that was for the only a quarter unit. The Saints under 42.5. That did stick. Uh, they actually I believe they landed right at 42, if I'm not uh, remembering that wrong. But either way, we get the win there. Texans Titans under. And I had gotten uh, the under 7.5. It looked like, actually, when it came out, it came out at under 9. So it was actually my line was worse than the one that actually came out. So, got that win. I think the, it was like 3-0 at the end of the first quarter. So, that one, again, pretty much what I expected. I thought it was going to be like 3-0, 6-0. Uh, so, that was pretty close. Or that one, you know, cashed relatively easily. The Texans-Titans, though, as far as the first half, that one did not go the way we wanted to. Um, I think it was Joe, uh, or one, one of you, and I apologize, had kind of mentioned like, hey, this could really be a, a, a letdown game for the Titans. And I knew that going in. Uh, usually, if it's a letdown game, at least from what I'm, you know, the games that I'm remembering and just kind of the stats that I have, the first half at least is usually a, you know, a close game if nothing else, uh, like a one possession game, and then it's usually that second half where you'll see that team kind of slide off or they just don't make adjustments or the players aren't, you know, they come out just kind of flat or whatever, and unfortunately that, you know, that let off the letdown game kind of happened in the first half as well, and the Titans just really couldn't do anything, and I think the Texans' bye week did end up helping them. They prepared a lot more than I thought they were going to uh, throughout that bye week, so we dropped the first half on that one. Uh, the teaser is the one that really pissed me off, because the Saints, they ended up losing by like 11, uh, So and they had the ball. They had the, I want to say they kicked a few field goals I just didn't like, but they had the ball at, towards the end of the game. They could have got the garbage time, and they just didn't, but Whatever. Um, so they caused us to not get that one. Uh, the Vikings money line would have hit though, because uh, I had the Vikings, and that is another game I broke down. And of course, the one that I didn't give out is the one that hit. So they didn't hit the teaser. Um, the under 48 also didn't come through. And I didn't talk about that one last week, but the kind of the theory on that one was both of these teams are relatively run heavy. Um, especially because they find a lot of success on the ground. Like the Packers, if you didn't know it, they're a good defense, but 
they're really susceptible to the run, especially a good running game. Uh, and the Vikings were able to take advantage of that. And I actually did give out, like, hey, Dalvin Cook as a prop for his over. That looked pretty good. And I believe that did hit depending on what number you got. But I think it was, like, 80 to begin the week or pretty close to that. So, again, those did come, you know, to fruition. But just these other two that I actually gave out didn't. So, it happens sometimes. Um Again, for the week, we ended up going 5-5, five and five, but because of the smaller unit sizes on some of these, we end up making about a unit for the week. So that's good, at least, to get back in the win column. As far as this week, so what are the picks that I'm looking at? I'm going to go in order of the ones that I like most. And so the one that I like most, unfortunately, has also moved the most, um, the Rams game. So when this game first came out, and this was Sunday night, uh, I was able to get the Rams plus 3. Believe it or not, uh, Rams plus three, and that was, I was just shocked. I jumped on that, and I think I just said this last week. I was like, I'm not really trying to look to take lines early in the week anymore because a lot of the, the juice is kind of squeezed already. These books are getting really, really sharp this time of year. I'm not sure what the hell they were thinking putting Rams plus three. Um, the Packers, I know, you know, they had a good little run. It was a good game with the Vikings. They lost by a field goal. You know, it wasn't embarrassing or anything like that. But the Packers, I've said this for a little while now, they're, and I guess you could say this about them every year, I don't want to call them, like, frauds, but there's a lot of stuff there that's very fluky. Um, a lot of their wins, especially their, a lot of their recent wins, have been very fluky and things that could have just gone either way or things that maybe the other team just had kind of a bad break. And the one that comes to mind, of course, is when they played Washington and Tyler Heineke had that, like, touchdown that wasn't a touchdown because he slid head first or something like that. And if you go back and just look through the last few weeks of their games, it's just, like, weird win after weird win where games that they just probably shouldn't have won um, or at least should have been, like, a closer game and they, they look like a way better team than they really are. And what happens is those wins, the statistics behind those wins get put in the books, but nothing else. So when you're breaking these games down or when Vegas is making the line, these guys, and I will tell you, that's probably their biggest flaw. Um, and not just for the books, but for guys who do this like professionally, and I mean guys on a much bigger scale than me, guys who are dropping like hundreds of thousands of dollars, the biggest drawback and probably the biggest uh, issue that they have is they like to go strictly off of stats and sometimes that's good um you know once we're in this time of year you have for the most part most of these teams you kind of know what they're doing and what they want to do and their game plans and all that kind of stuff but every year there's one or two teams that just don't fit that mold there's like there's always those one or two teams that have just got some like fluky wins some just you know weird luck things that happened and, and they kind of the ball bounced their way or whatever and it makes them look a lot better or a lot worse than they really are. And that is exactly what I believe happened for this line because that Packers minus three should have never been up there, in my opinion. Um, as of right now, of course, it's moved down to a pick em, and it's only Tuesday. So we've had a lot of movement here. I think yesterday I was looking at this because I was – I'd put a unit down on it, and then I was considering going over a unit on this one because I was just like, wow, that line's just way off. And – I didn't get a chance to do it because it was already down to Rams minus one or minus one and a half when I looked at it again, and now it's at a pick em. So if you want to get the line that I got initially with this one, you would really have to put this thing on a teaser some way, somehow. Um, so like I said, I have two other picks I'm going to give you here, but if you want to get this one to that number, again, you're going to have to tease it somewhere. And really, I would feel comfortable um, even just taking it outright. I, I really believe the Rams win this game outright. The Packers do not have the defensive pressure as far as their front four to get to the Rams. They, they don't have what the Titans had. Um, they just they don't have a way to, to get Stafford off his spot. On top of that, Sean McVay is 3-1 and one coming off the bye weeks. I've run the numbers on this one. The Rams, again, got a little bit healthier. Yeah, they're still missing Robert Woods. Um, that week off should have given them at least a little bit of time to kind of work Odell Beckham more into the game plan and kind of get him more accustomed to what, what his role is. Um, Daryl Henderson also had, had, you know, he was a little beat up already. Uh, the offensive line, again, just kind of catering to some nicks and bruises and things like that. So a lot of that should be improved. The Packers did play that tough game with the Vikings. I think the Rams are probably going to come in here um, with a game plan of running a lot and not necessarily like a smash mouth kind of game, but just like left and right, 
getting the Packers moving, tiring them out, getting that defense going, um, and being able to just shut them out in that second half and close the door and get the hell out of there. So this should be a pretty good game for the Rams. I do expect a huge bounce back here. Uh, and it's one of those teams, like, just every year, these really good teams start off pretty good. They kind of have a lull, like, in the middle of the year, whether they're feeling themselves and maybe just get a bad stretch of uh, games or whatever. And then they kind of pick it back up right at the end of the season going into the playoffs. And I think that's going to be the case for the Rams here. Everything's setting up pretty nicely for them. But that's my favorite pick. Again, if you can somehow get that line. I do like the Rams just to win outright, whether it's the pick or the money line. The money line, of course, in this case, being the better. I'm not sure why these odds are any different, to be totally honest with you. Uh, but in this case, obviously, go with the money line because the uh, VIG is a little bit less on that one. But that's the number one pick. Uh, second one here is going to be this Falcons Jaguars game on the under. Now we had got the under, or I had got the under, should say at 48, and that was back on Monday morning. Uh, so the under 48. Now, if you want to tease these two together, you can get back through the line that I initially got. I know a lot of people don't like to tease totals. Uh, again, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm probably gonna say it again before the end of the year. But the totals do have key numbers. It is 44, 47, 51. And 41 for the lower scoring games. Uh, I don't even necessarily think you need to tease this. I really, I still like it to be totally honest with you. 46 and a half. I think um, I would actually like this one all the way down to the 44. Both of these teams are really struggling to move the ball. Um, they both have some injuries that they're dealing with. I think the Jaguars probably aren't as banged up, uh, but they're both playing relatively conservatively uh the falcons with cordell patterson i am assuming he makes this game but especially if he doesn't it's going to be a really tough uh ask for them and we just saw them get demolished by the patriots we actually saw them two two weeks in a row just get their ass handed to them by the cowboys and then the patriots obviously the jaguars don't have the offense that those two teams had but the jaguars defense um is really good it's actually really underrated for you know the team they are a lot of people just aren't giving them credit but they can get some pressure on Matt Ryan, and the Falcons just don't really have a lot of options on where to go with the ball, especially if Patterson is not playing. If Patterson is playing, I like the Falcons to win. If he's not, it's a true, honest-to-goodness coin flip. The Jaguars, on the other hand, uh, their offense has just been super conservative. It has been the whole year. Uh, yeah, they have you know some blow-up spots, but for the most part, they're going to try to keep everything short. They're going to try to run the ball. They're going to try to play left and right. Um, not really conducive to high-scoring games. The Falcons' defense is not good, um, but it's not absolute garbage either. The teams that we've seen them really get blown out by, teams like the Cowboys, you know, those offenses, when they're at full potential, you know, those offenses are just some of the top offenses in the league, and I don't think that that's the Jaguars. So I have this game, like I said, I have it really capped at like a 17 to 10, 21 to 14, somewhere in there kind of game. So I like it even down to the 44. Um, below that, I'm not really feeling it. But if you want to just buy the half point even to get to the 47, again, because it is a key number, that's fine. Or if you want to tease it, you can do that as well. Um, but again, that will leave that up to you. But again, the pick I got was the under 48. Uh, next one here is really going to be the third pick. I really like it, but I, I can totally understand why some others do not. Uh, the Cowboys Raiders. So I had got this at under 51, and I got this uh, actually last night, so Monday night. And it's it's moved down a half a point, so that's good uh, in the sense that I got some, some line value on that one. But it's not a huge move, so this is the one that you can still get and really just buy the half point, and it's probably going to be like at minus 120. It's not going to cost you a whole lot to get that half point. Um, they usually don't charge a whole lot for the totals, but again, you are getting a key number in regards to totals at the 51. Why are we looking at this, though? Um, again, just looking through the numbers and the algorithm and all that kind of stuff. If both of these teams were at 100%, my algorithm has them scoring 52 points. A few things that I believe are not going to work out for these teams. One, the Cowboys receiving game is going to be a big step yeah it's going to take a big step back is how i should have said that the loss of amari cooper was very evident last week and the issue with not having amari cooper there is not so much these you know big long field bomb threats or anything like that 
Amari Cooper is more of like your possession guy. He is like a uh, almost like a prime Larry Fitzgerald. You know, he's quick. He gets off the line. He's gonna you know catch the ball if you put it in a good spot for him. And he always has the possibility of taking these little slant routes into like a, you know 10, 15, 20 yarder. That is a huge threat to have on your offense, and it's really really good, especially when you're playing against teams who are gonna play you in man or in press coverage, and especially when the other team or your you know the defense on the field has a great front four now that's exactly what the Raiders have they have a great a great front four on defense where they don't need to send a blitz to get pressure on your quarterback and they've done that consistently every week throughout this entire game they have probably one of the best if not the best front four what does that mean for Dak that means he's gonna have to get rid of the ball a lot faster uh, last week if you watch them play against the Bengals the Raiders that is they were getting after Joe Mixon in the backfield. Yeah, he did have a good day at the end of the day, and he had a couple, you know, uh, scores. I will tell you, one of those came in garbage time, and it came off of a, uh, I believe it was a, a Derek Carr fumble or an interception that happened like their own 40 or 35 yard line. A lot of these points that the Bengals put up against the Raiders last week, they were a little fluky in the sense that. They came off of turnovers, and they came off of turnovers that happened within, like, the 40-yard line the of the Raiders. So, again, I call them flukes, not because turnover, turnovers don't ever happen, but because it's very hard to predict. They're not predictive stats. They're not sticky stats. And once the fumble has occurred, whoever is going to recover the fumble is even less predictable. It really just depends on who's around the ball at what time and where you are on the field. So... I don't believe the Cowboys are going to put up as many points as the Bengals did last week. Not only because of those kind of, you know, fluky scores off of turnovers, but secondly because the receiving game is going to be a little bit worse than what the Bengals had last week. The Bengals had a lot of success going over the middle of the field with a lot of, uh, like, crosser routes, things like that. If you watch the game last week with the Cowboys, Cedric Wilson is not the guy you want going across the middle. He gets alligator arms. He does not like to be you know unprotected he's not going to go and lay himself out and take a big shot i don't want to necessarily say i blame him he's not a huge guy but it's really hard to make your offense run through him and that's probably what they're going to try to do when they throw the ball there should or they should find more success with guys like dalton schultz uh maybe using tony pollard and zeke kind of out of the backfield maybe as some receiving threats as well and i think that they will find success on the ground if and when they find that success on the ground they're probably going to stick to it or they should stick to it to keep moving the ball keep the chains going just kind of stay ahead of schedule and i do expect them to win this game on the other hand though again the raiders great defense is going to come and make you know it's going to make an impact on what the cowboys can do and what they want to do when they get on offense the raiders though just don't really have a lot going for them the cowboys defense is a lot better than we expected coming into the year but the Raiders just not having a, a great offensive stable kind of puts a damper on what they can do against even a worse defense. So they really only have Darren Waller as kind of their go-to guy. Josh Jacobs looks fine, but that team just has not really put it together to give him a lot of great success on the ground. He's obviously not getting a lot of you know catches out of the backfield, so he's kind of limited. Darren Waller is the only guy that I would be worried about if I'm the defensive coordinator and I have a very strong feeling that they're going to stick Micah Parsons on Darren Waller um, and or keep a safety over him to kind of limit what he can do. I wouldn't be surprised if they send some more blitzes at Derek Carr just seeing the last two weeks that Derek Carr has been under pressure and he's just constantly turning the ball over. For all those reasons, I believe this is going to be a lower scoring game. Uh, Like I said, at the very, like, tip top of what I would expect these teams to give us is 52 points and that is if everybody was healthy if they had a full week to prepare and really if this was just a not Thanksgiving game if this was just a regular game between these two teams because it's so early in the week because both of these teams are coming off of Sunday games because it's Thanksgiving because there's so many injuries all of these things are pointing me to the under Uh, the under 51 seemed really good I really like it. It is my third pick out of all these. And the reason it's the third pick is because you can make the argument the other way about all these injuries. You know, the Raiders defense, yes, they have a lot of great pressure up front, but 
their secondary isn't that great. So the Cowboys, if they find success with that passing game, they can make a couple of deep shots and, you know, keep some points on the board. The Raiders have been turning the ball over a lot, especially when they're under pressure. And if that's the case, there's no guarantee that the Cowboys won't get good field position. They won't get exactly what the Bengals got last week and be able to put up some points because of these turnovers. I believe that it can go over, but I also believe it is a very narrow path to this game going over 51 points. It has to be exactly perfect, and both teams have to make exactly the right moves and the mistakes, I guess, in the Raiders' case, for this game to go over 51 uh, I like the Raiders plus seven in this one, again, because I'm thinking this is going to be like a 21-17, 17-14, you know, 14, something like that kind of game. So I like the Raiders plus seven if you wanted to take it that way, but I really like the under 51 in this one. So those are my three picks for right now. Um, I really, again, I'm going to try to stick to just those three picks and most likely just those three games. But just in case you're wondering, uh, I know some of these websites for Thanksgiving, they put out like different... Um, you know, free bonuses and uh, free like pick 'em contests and stuff like that. So for the games on Thanksgiving, I just wanted to run down this real quick and give you a little bit of uh, detail on some of these in case you need to make some of those picks. The Bears Lions, the Bears have come out saying they're going to fire Matt Nagy after the game. It sounds very negative on you know at face value when you hear okay your coach is getting fired. My take on this though is a little bit different. And that the Bears can now do whatever the hell they want to do and not have to worry about it. Uh, Matt Nagy, when he was not there a few games ago, really we saw that offense come to life. Uh, yes, Justin Fields was there, was not Andy Dalton. It looks like it is going to be Andy Dalton in this game, but Andy Dalton is not a terrible quarterback. We have seen him step up in these positions and make a decent, you know, a decent game out of it. The Lions are not a team I'm necessarily worried about on defense. Uh, the Lions really, they threw the whole kitchen sink, <laughs> really, at everything they had at the Steelers and came out with a tie. We saw them do that against the Rams, and they still lost. The Bears have the perfect offensive style to beat this Lions team. The Lions really have a hard time when they, you know, when they play up against a team who wants to run and be physical, a team like the Eagles that just blew them out of the water. I think the Bears are going to do the same thing. I do believe the Bears are going to be a little bit more aggressive. They're not going to have to worry about Nagy, you know, nagging them so much. And really, again, I just, I have a feeling that the Bears are going to be a lot more open with their offense. Aside from me just having a feeling, though, the Lions have not been good traditionally on Thanksgiving. The Lions really, and any team that just has not won by this point in the season, uh, just traditionally is not either... They're not going to win, you know, many games. And if they're going to win a game, it's going to be one of the the last games, like one of the one to two last games of the season, mainly because the other team is not going to be trying necessarily. And that's where we'll probably see them get a win. In this one, I do believe the Bears come out, put on a good show, and they get the win, and they probably do get the cover. Uh, so that's the way I'd be leaning on this one, the under 41.5 as well, of course, for this one, the under at the 41 and a half gives you the key number on the 41 and just that little hook to kind of put you over the top there. Uh, we already went over the Raiders Cowboys game, Bills Saints, the Bills earlier in the week were at minus four. At that point, I really did like the Bills. At, right now, I'd probably still say I'm still leaning the Bills. Um, I guess the six is really as high as I'd want to go with this. Uh, again, if you haven't been listening to this, six has become more of a key number than seven over this past year. And I think that's here to stay, uh, unless the rules change again. But the Bills minus six is really where you want to be on this one. Yes, it would have been great to get them at minus five or minus four and a half or minus four even. Uh, the Saints are great at stopping the run, but the Bills aren't really a running team. So what the hell are they going to stop? Uh, the Saints, obviously, they're playing indoors. The Bills are actually going to benefit more from that than the Saints would, just like last week. I would let you know the Colts were going to benefit more from being outside in the cold, the rain, the wind, than the Bills were. It's exactly what happened. We saw the Colts go in there and dominate. Now, that one was not an official pick. I gave that out because that was a pick I had personally. Uh, but same story, just reversing the roles this time. The Bills indoors in the Superdome. I think they're going to be on a fast track. They should be able to put up a lot of points. They should be able to pass as much as they want. The Saints, again, 
Great at stopping the run, not so great at stopping the pass. Uh, can they keep it close? Possibly. I think the Bills are kind of pissed off, though, about their couple of losses recently. I fully expect them to put on a show, put up a lot of points here. Hell, they may even go over on their own. This might be one of those Bills, like, 41 to, you know, 10 kind of games. I like the Bills minus 6 and the over. So if you have any of these Thanksgiving picks, any of these, like, Thanksgiving free uh, parlay bonuses or whatever, that's the picks that I would have for you guys. But for now, that's it. Again, I'll put the three picks that I have, the three favorite picks, in the description below. If you have any comments, concerns, anything that you want to talk about, any of the games that you'd like this week, please let us know. I know this is one of the biggest weeks for football as far as regular season, just because everybody's doing it, everybody's eating turkey, watching football. So let us know what you got. I'm sure a lot of us would like to tell you. Thank you again, though. Have a great day.